Good evening and welcome. Please state your name. My name is Alyssa Dye. And are you from the city of Long Beach? I'm from East Rockaway, but I live in Long Beach. All right, thank you. All right, we have seven questions for you. And then at the end of that period of time, we'll come back and we'll actually go on the item. Right, would you like to tell us something about the nature of your business?
same people and stuff like that. But if there's anything the city can do to increase the number of bids, I think it would really benefit the taxpayers of the city. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish, wish to speak to address item number four? Seeing none, we can move forward. Item five is a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 2019-20 fiscal year. Uh, this is a housekeeping, housekeeping item, excuse me, that's needed because our uh, our chief plant operator the water purification facility, Tech McCarthy, retired recently on July 31st. Uh, the challenge here uh, is, presented, is presented is that Kevin is currently the only employee in the water purification plant with something called a, a 1B license. You got that right? Uh, that's issued by the Department of Health and it's needed in order to run our specific water purification plant. So until a successor is found, Kevin has very generously agreed to come back on a part-time basis for 40 hours a month. Um, and uh, this item simply takes part of Kevin's full time salary and transfers it to a part-time plan. Are there any questions from the council? Okay, we'll move on to item number six. Um, just one brief question with respect to the licensing. Uh, at this time, I know within other organizations, there's some level of professional training that's provided to workers within the unit. Um, do we plan to do this? Or, and how do we move forward in terms of a succession plan? Well, that's actually built into the licensure, licensure requirements. You have to have, you have a test examination, and uh, you have to also uh, obtain a certain level of what I call clinical experience, which is really the experience requirement. So yes, that is that's built into the process itself in terms of the, uh, the certification process. That is. Okay, thank you for the clarification. At this time, we'll open up item number five to the public. Are there any questions with respect to item number five? Seeing none, we will move. Oh, yes. Eileen Hessen. Thank you. I'm sorry if this is a dumb question. But the money is going for a full-time $27,000 salary into a 40-hour-a-month salary or not? In other words, is he making the same amount, say, per hour that he was? He, he actually is. He okay. offered it very generously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Are there any other questions with respect to item number five? All right, seeing none, we'll move forward. Okay, item six is a resolution authorizing the publication for hearing of the ordinance authorizing financing for various capital projects in and for the city of Long Beach, Nassau County, New York, stating the estimated total cost thereof is $20,510,441. The property is set up there for, including the expenditure of $12,041,000, expected to be received in the state or federal aid, authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $20,510,441 bonds from said city to finance said appropriation, and further authorizing any amounts received from the United States of America and or the state of New York to be expended towards the cost of certain of such capital projects as indicated herein for redemption of any notes and bonds issued therefore for to be budgeted as an offset to announcements for payment of the principal of an interest on said notes and bonds. This item is a publication only, I gotta read it one more time too. Uh, this item is a publication only and the hearing will be held August 20th. And uh, I believe we have a motion on this item. <laughs> the motion to replace the previously provided Schedule 1 with an updated Schedule 1. Of said object or purpose 
for reduction of the state's obligations issued therefore, or to be budgeted as an offset to taxes for the payment of the principal of and interest on said bonds. Designers of publication only, here you'll be held on August 20th. Yeah. And finally, item number eight is a resolution authorizing publication for hearing of an ordinance authorizing financing for replacement of the city's elevated water storage tank. Stating the estimated total cost thereof is nine million two hundred forty thousand five hundred forty dollars, appropriating appropriating nine million dollars for such purpose and authorizing the issuance of nine million dollar bonds to finance said appropriation. Uh, $240,540 to be appropriated in the future, and the expenditure of city water rate charges up to $3 million grant funds expected to be received from the state of New York to be expended towards the cost of set object or purpose or redemption of the city's obligations issued therefore, or to be budgeted as an offset to taxes for the payment of the principal and the interest on said bonds. Designers for publication only, and here will be held August 20th at 7 p.m. I will move on to the vote. Okay, so we are at item number three for voting. Resolution granting waiver of Wall Street parking requirements for Thomas 14 East Park Avenue for a tattoo studio. Expected to be received from the state of New York to be expended toward the cost 
and said object or purpose or redemption of the city's obligations issued therefore or to be budgeted as an offset to taxes for the payment of the principal and uh, of an interest in said bonds. What's your school of this item? Hello. And finally, item 8 is a resolution authorizing publication for hearing of an ordinance authorizing financing for replacement of the city's elevated water storage tank. Stating the estimated total cost thereof is $9,240,540, appropriated $9 million for such purpose, and authorizing the issuance of $9 million bonds to finance an appropriation of $245,40 to be appropriated in the future, and the expenditure of city water rate charges and up to $3 million grant funds expected to be received from the state of New York to be expanded towards the course of said object or purpose for redemption of the city's obligations issued therefore or to be budgeted as an offset to taxes for the payment of the principal of and interest on said bonds. Introducing the adoption of this item. Hello. Hello. City Clerk, we make a motion to close the meeting.
We will engage in civility. Your three minutes will be honored. The past practice, I understand that there was something different happening at the beginning of this year. Uh, we are not going to honor that. We're going to allow for you to get your questions answered.
our first councilwoman, right, black councilman, but we have also, in the history of Long Beach now, our first black council president. Let's give it up for Lisa Moore. You know, I can just hear the, um, the echoes of we shall overcome, right? So in this community, right, and it's not happening all over, but here in Long Beach, we're, we're making a statement, not just for words, but actions, that we have overcome today, right, by having our first black councilwoman in power. This is huge for us, and we're just going to march forward uh, because we are a diverse community and we need that uh, shown here in the council. Yeah. So, with that said, I, I just wanted to have a couple of questions. And my first question is uh, why is why is Long Beach not celebrating National Night Out this year? National Night Out was uh, also canceled last year, 2018. The North Park Intervention and Crisis Team has not met since uh, September 2017. In 2016, the Long Beach Police uh, did participate in a community forum held at the Long Beach King Center on July 13, 2016, uh, which Commissioner Tagman did not attend, neither uh, any of his lieutenants. So for some of you who don't know, what is the National Night Out? National Night Out is an annual event that promotes police community partnerships to make our neighborhood safer. Uh, it, it creates more caring policy. This provides a great community uh, to bring police and neighborhoods together uh, and, and create a positive circumstance, right? So thousands of communities from all over the United States participate every first Tuesday uh, in August to celebrate this day. So the question is why, again, uh, are we not celebrating a national night out? So for the point of historical ac uh, accuracy, community leaders, uh, ministers, clergy leaders, and residents within the North Park community have asked for a structured community policy since 2008. Uh, how long will this community remain unheard? We need community uh, relationships. Uh, if you don't know us, you will stop us. If you don't know us, you will take it and pass judgment. Just recently, uh, one of the community leaders, Marcus Tinker, um, he was very upset. He was stopped while going to his house uh, in February. And we're asking, you know, why, right? He was just, he was just driving to his house and he was stopped for parking. So this is a prime example uh, that the community policing in Long Beach has failed. So what is the community police, policing policy, right? We're asking for a policy, what is it? What are the initiatives to promote a good relationship between the North Park community and the Long Beach police? So, so we want to make it clear, right? That we know there was a barbecue about a year ago and that's not the answer we're looking for. We want a good relationship with our police, Police and community working together, right? It happened years ago, and we want to bring that back. We need a policing model which respects the community, builds trust within the community, and will help members in the community to share vital information with the police officers to ensure safety, not only for community members, but also for the officers, right? In other words, the yeah. policing benefits us all, right? And we just ask the council to address this long issue. Thank you. Okay, stay there, please. Um, I spoke to the commissioner earlier. Commissioner here, Commissioner Taggy here. <laughs> so, first, first I'll say that um, I'm very concerned that we did not have a national night out tonight. Um, all across Nassau County and other uh, municipalities, they are celebrating national night out. I think this should be a priority. Um, and again, I will reach out to all of my colleagues here. Um, that we will make community policing a priority. Um, this is long overdue, as you just said, 2008. Um, we have a long way to go, but we must build a relationship uh, between our police and our community. Um, I, I, I know for a fact, I feel strongly, I can say this with confidence, that our police here um, want to be connected to the North Park community, and we must find innovative and creative ways to make that happen. And so I will look into this matter and I will um, bring that information back to this body as soon as possible, as soon as I've had a conversation with my colleagues. So thank yeah. you for bringing this to our attention. It thank must you. be addressed. It must be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Earlier today, I 
had written this speech that was filled with many unkind words, and it was prepared for an unkind event for many unkind people. But on behalf of the celebration here today, I have to say I shall not speak from the speech. So, as the poet Robert Frost had put it, two roads diverged in the yellow wood. And we ourselves, in the city of Long Beach, found ourselves in a path that is very divided. And the yellow wood that divides their path is as wrong as the people who have created the secondary path. Is it not true that our forefathers and our fathers have created a country that was made to be governed by people who are accountable to the people? Was this not declared in our Declaration of Independence and enshrined within our Constitution? And I know I ask many questions that are more philosophical in nature and that cannot be addressed by looking at a chart or can be answered through a simple Google search. But I would rather ask a question that appeals to the hearts of the many and allows the citizenry to really understand the government that they've been given, that they've been given by their ancestors, and that's been a shrine of tradition. The question I have to ask is the accountability of the government in which we have been given and the local government as a whole with individuals and city council members who are not here for their own funerals seems a bit disappointing to say the least but um i have to ask about the accountability because earlier today i had a very sour taste in my mouth because i knew individuals would not be here today in order to be accountable for the citizenry and in fact, we have to ask the question whether or not our own representatives are truly representing us. It's disgraceful in all honesty. High taxes, water which has gone bad, budget cuts which have gone awry, and I hate to say it, but leaders who simply do not like the citizens that they govern. I have to ask you this morning, in light of everything, how will you fix this? And how shall you address the people tonight? Well, first of all, um, you made a lot of comments. I want to address one. You said that accountability, you believe that accountability is a philosophical concept. And I'm going to say that's not true. I'm going to say that it, we can only engage the citizens when we begin to engage them with truth. Okay? We, we, can't, we can't do anything else before we provide truth before we're open and honest about what we do. Um, we cannot engage people until we're transparent, but also we can't engage people until we come to a place where we can admit that we're not perfect and that mistakes happen. The people would rather hear us say, look, we didn't get it right today, than say everything's fine. So that's where we are right now. That's why we're beginning this conversation. Anissa Moore is not gonna fix anything because Anissa Moore is going to work with everyone who's here at this day. And also, Anissa Moore is going to ask the people who are sitting out in the audience, how do we do this? Good leadership is not about one person making decisions. It's about one person organizing the people to come together that we have a collective purpose. That's what leadership is about. And for the next couple of months, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to engage the people hear from the people, try to make the best decisions I can to communicate those decisions to my colleagues. We do this as a team, and I believe that would be the beginning of us, uh, and you, as a young person here in the audience, seeing the change. But you will see the change, all right? And I believe that you'll be proud, and someday I think you'll be sitting in the seat as well. So thank you for your question. <laughs> I would like to first thank Mr. Edward Verona III for everything that which he has provided me. He has uh, introduced me to the city council meetings and introduced me more to you this morning. And I would like to thank him very much for that. I would like to say a round of applause for Eddie Verona.
Good evening, City Council members. Mike Delory, Long Beach, New York. Good evening. Uh, congratulations, Council Member. Thank you. Uh, this is actually a, a good commentary. So, good evening, Council members. I thought it was important to mention an issue that came up last night. A neighbor of mine sent me this text last night at 10, 10 p.m. Just called the cops on Mio Posta restaurant. They are doing construction and cutting cement outside and I cannot sleep. I was heading back home from 7-Eleven on Long Beach Road when I received the text. I pulled into the parking lot at Mirror Avenue and West Olive Street. Here's what I saw. Two police cars with officers outside of their cars along with the building department inspector. I stayed and watched at a distance because I wanted to make sure there was not a bigger issue going on. I eventually walked over and mentioned that I received a text from a neighbor being on the Civic Association, people in my area, which is the walks, text me things because they know I go to meetings like this and bring up issues or recommendations. The point is this. I want to commend the police dispatcher who took the call and the two officers who responded, along with the building department inspector, Richard Schiff. In my opinion... We can clap for our police officers. In my opinion, that is quick action. They had gotten in contact with the manager of the restaurant and said he needed to get down here ASAP. He arrived and it was further conversations. After about 20 minutes, I left. Many times we hear at council meetings a lot of problems that exist. I want to publicly commend the police department, the building department, and others. If you see or hear something, say something. Call the police if need be. Don't feel that you are bothering them. They will show up and quickly. On a different topic, I want to thank all the lifeguard personnel who have rescued so many people this past two weeks, and many also after the beach closes. The summer is a little past the halfway mark. Lastly, on behalf of the Long Beach Lions, I want to thank uh, Mr. Miranda for his efforts in the Pacific Park Playground, Lions Fountain, and the Lions Ball and Park Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for changing the procedure. 
it is just the proper way to conduct things. And people come up and they ask questions and they deserve the answers. And Absolutely. I really, really appreciate that. And so does everybody else, I'm sure. Um, a couple of questions. And, and listen, I, I like it. We're going to be easy on you. We're not. I didn't expect this. Your name wouldn't be Roy Lester. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Bender asked for a meeting with the commissioner regarding all the expenditures of the projects, all the projects. Is that going to be a public meeting? Okay, so I, again, um, I wasn't aware of the fact that Mr. Bender was going to talk about the meeting situation. But once this meeting is over, I will be briefing uh, those individuals who are sitting here. I'll be briefing Mr. Bendo and uh, Mr. Ramo in terms of establishing uh, meetings. Um, there will be several different types of meetings that I've envisioned. That's not going to be just the only meeting that's going to take place. There will be open meetings, but there will be the meetings will be run in a different way, and I want to roll that out uh, in the right way because I have a lot of ideas with respect to um, how we'll do that. But we will have open information where residents will be able to come after work, sit here, and actually hear the dialogue. We'll also have um, engaged people in terms of having access to reports. So other people will give us reports so that anyone who's here will have the opportunity to become more aware of what's taking place within the city. And I think this will help us in terms of bridging um, the communication gap between uh, the residents and us as the leadership. Okay, uh, Mr. McNally has come up several times and pointed to Yes, and I've had that conversation with him as well, and I actually support uh, open meetings. Uh, open meetings, it's very important. Um, it's done every place else. Um, I'm, I serve on other boards, so I'm aware of it. Good, good. Um, the, uh, the boardwalk, the bike lanes, I brought it up last meeting, somebody else brought it up. I go there in the morning, you know, people were just not aware of it. We talked about marking them in some way, but you know, if, if you guys could pursue it, because someone will be hit, they have been hit already, you know, and as an attorney, it, it, it's an open and shut case against the city as far as I'm concerned. And if there's no reason for that, there are ways to address it. But people still wander into that by plane all the time, and they, they're just not aware of it. Um, and the last thing, I guess I'm kind of disappointed that nobody knows what number four is going to cost us. We only have 350000 in that particular in the contractual service budget. Okay, if we have a thousand yard, a thousand um, six, six uh, yard trips, it's going to, that's $1.2 million that would exhaust that budget, and I'm sure that budget is for other things. You know, to vote on something and have no idea what it's going to cost, really, it's not fiscally responsible. Well, also, just remember the, the whole purpose is giving authorization to engage in the purchase. So that's the way we look at it sometimes in terms of how we go ahead and move forward with votes, because then otherwise, waiting forever would actually stop the progress. No, I, I but understand. But your point is well taken. But in terms we have of a history happened. of it. Ms. Moore, we have history year after year. Oh, this I've is seen not it. New, you know? It's not new, but we will address it. And there will be additional reports so that we can get that information out and also that we can receive some information ourselves. So there will be changes with respect to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Lou Good evening. Good evening. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, second of all, I've got a couple of very positive things. Um, I've noticed in the last week or so that the broken boards on the benches are being replaced. Good to see. Um, also, in terms of the beach, I always notice in the morning that the, the beach homework is in the beach. You know. um, recently, I was down in the beach in Lido, and they're not as nice as the beaches in Long Beach. They're, they don't have that. They have the replenishing, but there's still a lot of shells, I mean, there's still shells on the beach, so, but it, it seems to be working, the beach just seems to be in, in very good shape, it's nice to see. And the third thing, I wouldn't speak about it at all, but when Roy said something about the bike lanes, I was thinking about it recently, I know on highways occasionally have the, the, the cat eyes that light up, or not light up, but when they're, when they're reflecting, I don't know if that's something that could be incorporated into the bike lane. 
may be a tripping hazard. I don't know, but just something, just something else that might be, might be a little dangerous. Okay, if you are, if you have the opportunity, you can just email that to us. We sure. can send that information on, and then we can, you know, address that. Okay, great. And again, congratulations. Thank you. And also, uh, we just want to pause and just acknowledge um, our workforce for making sure that our beaches are clean. Oh, yeah, so thank no, you. It's, it's great. It's really nice to see. It's great. Good job. Thank you. All right, Ken Levine.
And um, but I got involved in the city because of its deteriorating finances in the 2018 budget crisis. This is when we were out of money. We had a 2.1 million dollar deficit that we could not pay, faced with a 12% tax hike and massive layoffs. Statements were released that the entire fire department would be laid off, or the entire part-time workforce of the city would be laid off. This unequal distribution of cuts and these proposed cuts, I got involved because these cuts were just not fiscally sound. And I proposed $1.4 million in cuts this year and $2 million dollars worth of cuts. Uh, $2 million of cuts this year, $1.4 million last year. But as I began to be involved, these problems were amplified and got much worse. But there is a glistening of hope. The resounding primary defeat of this administration and the change in presidency shows that this city is heading in the right direction. I hope this council and the new administration that takes effect will be fiscally conscious and will be truly free of political machines. To ensure this city is affordable for my generation, I ask the remaining council and new members to budget responsibly, reduce borrowing, and make sure, make sure that cuts that need to be made are made. But as this city enters a new era, I unfortunately will not be there to participate. In two weeks, I will depart for Washington, D.C. to be able to attend the Catholic University of America. But even though my involvement in the city will end, this will only be temporary. As after college, I will return to Long Beach and continue to fight for this city. Additionally, I wanted to thank this, everyone in this city who has supported me. Everyone who has commented on Facebook, given me advice and mentorship, and most importantly, voting to reject this administration and to support my ideas. Thank you to all, and God bless this city. Thank you. Um, 
On Saturday, there was a very big article in Newsday, um, DA and feds subpoena IDA records um, because they got illegal payouts. They left, they did not separate, but received separation payments. So the federal government is actually looking into this. Now, I know that we had asked that Madeline Singus look into our questions, and I'm wondering if that investigation is going on, because this is being taken care of pronto, very fast they're doing something, and our questions have been hanging around for quite a while, and that was a lot of money. Do you know if it's moving along? Can anyone speak to corporate counsel? Anyone else speak to this issue? If we can, publicly? Make any statement with respect to our investigation or the status of our investigation? <coughs> But it is going on. They're looking into. Somebody's looking into it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's hear from Liz Preston.
Uh, so on the number five payment made to the contract, the GOSA found a $5.35 mistake. So they held up payments number six, seven, eight, and nine, which finally got approved. We had to go back through all the things to try to find what this $5.35 was. Um, and uh, now all those payments have been made. The work is back in active again. Um, so we expect the, the OEM to probably be up and running by September. Okay, that's good news. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you once again, Mr. Preston. And I guess I should thank MacGyver. At this time, we'll hear from Mary Bonesack. $3 million 
dollars. Generally speaking, though, uh, water tanks have not fared well in those applications, but we're submitting the application regardless and hoping uh, that uh, Senator Kaminsky can help push a little bit on that. Okay, and then also with respect to the firefighter test, um, when will the test results be available? Do you have any idea? Um, I'm not sure. I think the test is given better. I'm not sure. My, my, I would speculate that it's going to be available in the next one. But I, I can make sure it's administered by the Civil Service Commission. Okay. Um, I, I, and I'm sorry. Yeah. I know my time is up, but um, I would suggest, Ms. Moore, that um, perhaps you, Mr. Vendo, whoever wants to, maybe you should walk through the West End on a weekend and see what is going on <coughs> down there. I know you've done walks before sure. in other places, but I think you need to look at the West End. They have problems and issues there. And I think you all need to be made aware of it. Yeah, I attended the last uh, West End Civic meeting, and a lot of the residents gave me the earful with respect to what's going on. So you will see a, a Facebook Live edition very soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's hear from Crystal Lake.
I thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. James Hall.
who continue to engage in heroic rescues. Let's continue to encourage them and let's continue to acknowledge them. With that, I thank you for coming and uh, have a very good evening. Stay proud.